Hello friends, I am very excited to start this new series called uh, Math Essentials for Machine Learning and before we jump start uh, into all these vectors, matrices, uh, probability, statistics right and then uh, univariate and multivariate derivatives, uh, let me first give you a simple context that where exactly what we are going to use so that it gives you a clear picture that you know why those pieces are important it will be very short introduction. So, basically whenever we have a input data say for example, you must have already seen the uh, titanic data set right where we are predicting the survivors um, and in that case what we get is a data set typically in a CSV format and such, but even before that you know before we can tell our uh, algorithm that uh, here is the data and we need to learn the pattern out of it, we need to we need a way to represent the data okay and for that we are going to use vectors and matrices so basically vectors will be containing your columns right like for example where did the passenger embark on that titanic ship that is one of the column will be one vector and similarly there will be many columns which we can represent as a vectors and a collection of vectors can be a matrix right now once we know how to represent the data then we are going to do something called as you know, multiplication and addition on this sort of vectors and matrices so that we can you know uh, uh, do feature selections and uh, feature engineering on top of it okay and once we are familiar with the features that we are going to work with then we are going to create uh, models right machine learning models and for that we are going to use concepts such as probability theory then we are going to use uh, the probability distribution functions etc then we are going to look into the different kind of norms in order to calculate the distance between two points right and then we are going to use some statistical modeling as well right and once using this concept we can create different models in order to try to fit the data as much as possible basically we want to represent as close as to the reality right and what our data is trying to say and then once we have couple of models in place then we are going to use our vector calculus method to optimize those models and pick the best one right so this is what will be the pipeline of this mathematical journey in this series and i hope uh, this gives you a very clear in, uh, uh, you know introduction to what the mathematical parts are in machine learning all right so we start with uh, a simple definition for the vectors um, so we have two types of vectors one is called the column vector and another is called the row vector now uh, what does it mean by a vector is is nothing but it's a list of numbers right and if we write them vertically then we call that as a column vector and if we write them horizontally which we can just transpose the column vector then it becomes a row vector and basically we are writing it horizontally right and it's just a list of numbers okay that is boring <laughs> okay so what does that mean is in unless and until we know uh, mathematically how to represent our data then it becomes quite boring right so what we will do is we'll take a simple example to show you what does it mean by representing data as a column vector first so you must have seen this um, titanix uh, data set which is just a sample of it so if i have to represent say this age column uh, as a data set then I would need to represent this age as a vector as a column vector so if you see here so that means my vector if I write it vertically then it will be 22.0 38.0 these are the age of the passengers right and this is what is meant by representing the data as a vector as a column vector in this case hope this makes it uh, simple for you now another interesting thing is what does it mean by row vectors so you know if I transpose this and write horizontally then it means it will become a row vector but then we will see how different operations are done on a row vector and column vector then it will become more clear as we move on. So now let us see quickly an example of uh, row vector uh, ok so, so of course uh, row vectors are nothing uh, like uh, nothing more than like uh, and uh, uh, transposing a column vector right so one is vertically represented another is uh, horizontally represented but then that is the case when we uh, need a column vector to be converted to a row vector but then in general why do we use row vector is because uh, 
typically row vectors in machine learning are used to store the weights right and these are basically the weights that uh, you know we will be calculating as part of our machine learning so these are the weights which will tell us that uh, you know which column is more important for example and so if the weight is high then mean that a column associated with that weight will be more important and if it is low then probably it is not important so we look into those uh, combinations as well but then for now just understand that uh, uh, row vectors are something represented horizontally again you know when we, when we will be doing some kind of uh, you know uh, uh, mathematical operations on the vectors uh, then we use row vectors and uh, column vectors together while we do multiplication and such kind of activity so this is all related to our high school uh, algebra if you remember and we are going to see a lot of examples on this so that it becomes you can refresh your uh, uh, co courses that you have done earlier and we should be good to go okay so uh, first let's look into one of the mathematical operations that we can do on vector is um, the addition operation okay so whenever we say addition operation that means we are talking about element wise uh, summation so basically if i have two row vectors a and b and um, it has n elements okay and in the elements are a1 2 a2 a3 and so on till an and then b row vector has elements from b1 b2 and so on up to bm and when we do an addition operation on it uh, what we are going to do is we are going to do an element wise uh, operation here so basically a plus b row vector will be oops a plus b equal to what we are going to do is nothing but a1 plus b1 comma a2 plus b2 comma a3 plus b3 and so on a n plus b m okay now one thing we need to keep in mind that you know we can add two row vectors element wise provided n is, is equal to m so the number of elements in both the vectors should be same okay and the similarly this is for row vector the same thing we can do for our column vector as well just if they are flipped uh, only thing the change will, only thing that will change is they will be vertically represented okay so that is the first thing um, the first operations that we can do on vectors now similarly uh, let's take this concept and understand uh, what is a matrix right so right now what we have uh, seen from here is uh, the column vectors 2 4 1 and 2 4 uh, 2 4 1 also represent as a row vector so if i have to you know represent this uh, as a matrix so what we are going to do is i'll just remove this here okay so matrix is nothing but um, collection of vectors together so i uh, you know i can uh, it can be two dimensional matrix and three dimensional matrix and uh, in order to represent that matrix uh, what we can do is we can put or stack together a couple of uh, vectors say 1 2 3 4 right and then i can parallelly i can put another matrix say 5 7 8 and so on right say 10 okay so basically it becomes a uh, 4 by 2 matrix right because it has four rows and two columns okay you can see this way. so it has four rows and two columns all right now uh, what does it mean again if i refer to my previous image here so you can see if i have to represent this a uh, few columns here so we have uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so there are 12 columns right and i have only five records say this is all my data set right so that means this could have become a matrix a two dimensional matrix and it would have like five rows and 12 columns so that means it be, it would become a matrix of 5 by 12 columns uh, matrix okay and individual columns can be represented as a vectors okay so that is all uh, the difference between uh, vectors and matrix okay so in our next video we'll see what sort of other operations can we do on matrices uh, of course we can do addition subtraction multiplication etc and we are going to see a lot of examples on that one till then have a great day and I hope you have understood the concepts of uh, vector and matrices.